Hi, hi everybody. Uh, so this is take two of uh, Rachel Gayla. As I share my testimony, I bring proof. As I share my testimony, I bring proof of the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ in my own experience as a sinning believer. As a believer who used to run to different churches looking for fame or looking for money. As a believer who lived a life of going to clubs. As a believer who would sit with mega pastors who have, you know, expensive cars. And then when they are preaching, they're like, hallelujah, I have a, an escalate. You know, Jesus told me, give my escalate to the other pastor. This escalate is 600 million. You know, pastors that are literally poisoning people every single day to kill them. And, and, and in Africa, many people are ignorant of the truth of Jesus. We had Bibles, but we put Bibles under the pillow. Hallelujah. That none of those men were trained by the Holy Ghost and Jesus. And none of them were, was humble. We are humbling themselves before the mighty hand of God. Hallelujah, somebody. So um, I'm not saying I'm attacking, but hey, this is eye opener. Hallelujah. This is eye opener. We are losing people because of them and because Satan has placed them. Just, me, I refused. It's free will. You can't refuse. Why would you, dis why would you accept to be a witch? Why would you say yes? Okay, today the devil tried you. He used tactics to try you. But you realize that, hey, I'm messing up myself. I'm going to end up in, 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 in the devil's world for eternity. And I'm killing the young people. If I don't preach against homosexuality, I'm covering sin. If I don't preach against sexual immorality, I'm covering sin. I want you to go, first of all, go to the book of Exodus. Because I tell people, if you don't limit God, don't, don't, don't limit the word of God. Because every word that is written in the Bible was not written by mere men. It was scripture for a reason. Either you're going to learn from the mistakes they did and you get better, or... You need knowledge. Hallelujah. You need to know the foundation where you come from. This is a history book. It's an educational book. So the gospels are powerful, but I want you to know that even Jesus quoted scripture. He quoted scripture from Isaiah, from Hezekiah, from Ezekiel. So you must know when, when I got to find out the spirit that was tormenting me, it was foreseeing. You can foresee. I could foresee. I, I could see what's going to happen next. That doesn't mean I'm in truth. If I'm still living in sin, I'm not in truth. Even if I foresee, even if I preach the gospel. So, so I want to get the scripture that opened up my eyes to realize that some of the pastors I went to even here in America did not serve the God of truth. I had their messages. I saw what they did. And I, 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 I went to their homes and I saw what was there. So I realized the spirit that is here is a spirit from the underworld. There is a false Christ. I'm going to show you scripture. Hallelujah. People who base their powers on water, we have to be very careful. Hallelujah. You cannot base your powers on water or dresses or shoes. That is a fake God. He's not the true living God who created heaven and earth. He's not the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He's not King Jesus of heaven. The, our God is the God of heaven and earth. He's not the God of the oceans. Even if he created the oceans. So Satan is deceiving very many people. We have to be very careful who we mingle ourselves with. I want you to go to the book of Exodus. Exodus 20. Because people have to know this truth. And, and when you know this truth, it will open your eyes. So do not limit yourself with the word of God. You need knowledge. We are, we are not going to, we are a generation that has been trained by Jesus, the king who was on planet earth. Not the Jesus who just comes in buildings and comes in images and, and voices and tells you buy this and do this. That's not Jesus of the Bible. Hallelujah. That's the Jesus of fame and wealth. We know those things. We've been there. He's after money. He's after fame. He's, he's after, you know, the other Jesus was different. So I want us to look at, um, would never despise the Ten Commandments. Never. The Ten Commandments, Never. And I'm going to show you what Jesus said about the Ten Commandments. And we're going to go to the adulterous woman. Father, we thank you because you are here. 
Exodus 20. Um, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not give false testimony against your neighbor. You, you cannot lie. You shall not covet your neighbor's house. You shall not covet your neighbor's wife or his male, female, or servant, or his ox, or his donkey, or anything that belongs to your neighbor. Hallelujah. We see people that snatch people's wives. I tell you, there's what they call consequences of sin. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt. I am the Lord your God. He's still the Lord our God. I'm a jealous God. I want to read a scripture. He says that you shall not bow before anything on earth or under the earth or under the sea. That is the scripture I want to read. Father, help me. Because my Bible is going to burnt in the fire. And um, so he says, um, he says, I am a jealous. He says, you shall not make 24. You shall not make yourself an image in form of anything in heaven, above on the earth, beneath all the waters below. You understand? We cannot make images and look at those images and say, this is God. This is where I get my anointing. Actually, even today, I read a scripture that shocked me in the book of Isaiah. You cannot worship money. You, you cannot say, oh, if, 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 oh, if I don't, or oh, a car, oh, or oh, 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 your child, or oh, your husband. People have gotten to a pro, an extent of, we know what we're talking about. If you love somebody too much and they leave, you get obsessed and even you get a sickness in the head. Because they're the only ones you think about. They're the only ones you talk about. They're the only ones you dream about. And that is the devil's tactic. So don't bring anything before God. It's good to love, but don't worship. Don't say, oh, without this person, I can't live. Without you, I cannot breathe. Are you God? Hallelujah. So he says, you shall not bow down to them or worship them. Hallelujah. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, punishing the children of the sin of their parents to the third and fourth generation, to those who hate me. Hallelujah. What is hating God? It is moving out with his enemy. Imagine if my husband married me and I'm his beautiful wife and I end up going with my neighbor because my neighbor talks a funny way or he looks a certain way or he has a wonderful car and I go to my enemy. My, ch my wife goes to my enemy. Somebody who is bad wants to kill me and wants to kill my children. We are married to God. We are children of God. We are his people. So if I go and I say, man, this pastor is the one who has anointing. If I don't go to that church, I don't make money. That's witchcraft. That is serving false gods. He says, punishing the children for the sin of their parents. This is the word. The wages of sin is death and the gift of God is eternal life. Hallelujah. You come back to God, you receive a gift. It's called eternal life. It's a gift. Eternal life is for those that have come back to God. It's a gift. Hallelujah. So he says, punishing children for the sin, for the parents, to the third and fourth generation of those who hate me, but showing love. Mark this. Then we're going to go to the adulterous woman. He says, showing love to a thousand generations of those who love me and keep my commands and keep my commands. Let us see Jesus' words because people think Jesus was a mere man. No. Let us go to, because he says, I'm going to show love. Hallelujah. He says, but showing love to a thousand generations of those that love me and keep my commandments. Run. John 14, 21. Hallelujah. Go to John 14, 21. Now these are the gospels. I'm going to show you God. God is amazing. Jesus is amazing. The Bible says he was the word. He was there from the beginning. Word was there from the beginning. Hallelujah. John 14, 21. I love the word. Hallelujah. John 14, 21. You need knowledge. Don't, don't limit your, yourself. You need knowledge. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. Who was speaking? It was God. He says, if you love me, keep my commandments. Go back to, to, to Exodus. 
Exodus 4. I mean, Exodus 6, it says, but showing love to a thousand generations of those that love me and keep my commands. I'm going to show you what loving Jesus is. 1421. Hallelujah. He says, hallelujah. 1421. Whoever has my commands and keeps them is the one who loves me. Whoever has his commandments and keeps them. It is the one who loves him. Therefore, he doesn't hate you. Therefore, he's going to bless you. Therefore, he's going to transform your life. Therefore, he's going to prosper you. Therefore, he's going to use you to save other people. Because if you love God, you love other people, you serve them with only the word of truth. You don't serve them by buying them clothes. You don't serve them by... You, you can do it if, if somebody doesn't have to what to put on. If somebody's poor on the streets, I do it all the time. Sometimes I buy new stuff and I just give them out. Sometimes I find people who have and I give them. Jesus wants me to give them because it's a demonstration of love. But I don't do it because I'm buying favor. I don't do it because I'm saving a life. I do it because I love them. And because the man in me loves them. So he says, whoever has my commands, keeps them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Keeps them. Whoever has my commands keeps them. Whoever has my commands and keeps them. Hallelujah. We can't miss a word. And keeps them is the one who loves me. He says, the one who loves me will be loved by my father. And I too will love them and show myself to them. Ladies and gentlemen, honestly speaking in the flesh, these things are difficult. But once you grasp the love, I don't know. I don't know whether people understand love. Sometimes I love. I'm a lover. I'm not bragging. I'm a lover. Sometimes you can abuse me, but I'll forgive you that minute. You can say things. I can be, sometimes when I'm under pressure, I can react, but I speak the word. I bind the devil when I'm shouting because I know it is Satan attacking me. Hallelujah. I've seen him making me a vagabond. I cannot allow that again. So I say, in Jesus' name, I bind you, devil. You cannot talk to me. And yet I'm talking to a human being. It's like, oh my goodness, this woman is calling me the devil. Yes, that's what Jesus did to Lucifer. Hallelujah. Somebody can be speaking to you and yet it is Lucifer himself trying to tell you, aha, uh -huh. and you're like, ladies and gentlemen, you, Satan, you have no power over nobody in Jesus' mighty name. So listen, you need the knowledge. You need the word of God, adulterous woman, the power of love. Hallelujah. I'm going to sing to Kuten Deleza. Wait. Hey, I'm going to sing to Kuten Deleza. But the word is like me. When Jesus was delivering me, the Holy Spirit will tell me, Rachel, fear not. Fear not. Be strong. Fear not be strong. Hallelujah. Share your testimony to the youth. Hey, go and save them from those false prophets that are witches. Until we stand as a generation, as, an, as a people who fear God, we are going to see peace in our country, peace in our land. I love you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah. All right. John chapter 8. I am going away and you look for me and you know, and you will die in your sin. This is Jesus speaking. Where I go, you cannot come. He was going to eternal life. And if people refuse, they, they, they live in sin because they refuse the master. Hallelujah. Then they all went home, but Jesus went to the Mount of Olives at dawn, he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him and he sat down to teach. The teachers of the law of the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before. They made her stand before the group and say to Jesus, teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery in the law of Moses. In the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? Hallelujah. In the law, th those days, I don't know how many years, maybe 10,000 years ago, they used to, if they find your prostitute, you're stoned and you're killed. And the Bible says, thou shalt not murder. So that law was contradictory. That is the law that was removed. But the Ten Commandments, they were not removed. Hallelujah. So, 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 so the words say, oh, if somebody has done this, you do this to them. If somebody has done, no. I'm going to show you what love did. But the, the words that came after grace, 
save this woman. They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis of accusing Jesus. Hallelujah. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let any one of you without sin be the first to throw a stone. Who is perfect? Who is like me? Who is like the creator of that prostitute? Who is like the creator of that adulterer? Who is the creator of that murderer? Who is the creator of that witch? I want you to get a stone, stone, stone them for them to die. Guess what happened? Again, he stopped down and wrote on the ground. At this, those at this, those who had begun to go away, one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left, with a woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, "Woman, where are they?" Has no one condemned thee? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you. Jesus declared, go now and leave your life of sin. Go now and stop sinning. There's a version of love says, go and sin no more. Jesus did not elaborate, but of course this woman looked at her life. For instance, he saved me from the fire. I cannot go back into that world where the fire caught. I even fear to look there. He saved this woman from the pit, from death, from hell, from being a prostitute, from being shamed, ashamed, from, you know, he literally is like, oh my goodness, I've received a miracle. I'm saved by somebody. Oh my goodness, what a miracle. I'm saved from hell. Oh my goodness, saved me from these men. Oh my goodness, I was going to die. Can you go back to death? Common sense. After Jesus delivers you from sin, how can you look back? We will know why people go back because I'm here to help somebody. I lived in continuous sin. My friends died there. I did not die. I survived. Hallelujah. Accidents and poison and, 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 and men and, and the brutal false prophets and, 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 and people who had guns. They did not kill me. Is it because of what? Nothing. Grace. Hallelujah. And grace says, go and tell them that sin kills. Sin will, this is how sin kills. I tested it and so I'm about to wind up. If you live in sin, you'll never be happy. You'll wake up crying every day. Hallelujah. If you live in sin, abusing people, going to false prophets, going to witches, cursing other people. You know you can be a witch yourself when you wake up in the morning and curse everybody. You're a witch. Hallelujah. So if you are like that and you don't read the Bible, not reading the Bible is sin. Ignorance, being ignorant of the word is sin. That's what people don't understand. You cannot just have the Bible and keep it. Why do you keep it? It's your source of life. Read it. It's your source of power. Read it. It's your source of wisdom. You're going to be directed whenever you read the scriptures. Because that's God speaking. That is his first voice. Don't wait for ghosts that come to you and say, I am Jesus, give me your money. Like they told me, I am Jesus, take your car to this emulda. Uh, take your house here, uh, leave your house today. Give up. Why didn't that voice tell me repent? Why did that voice support a married man? Why did that voice tell me give your life to Christ today? That is the divination spirit. It uses money to buy favor. Boom, I ended up being initiated. Hallelujah. Because why? I was ignorant. Being ignorant of the word is sin. I'm winding up. He tells the woman, live your life of sin. Stop sinning. Ladies and gentlemen, this is how you die. Your money dies. Your skin dies. Your hair dies. Your eye lose color. There's a time I became black, like as if I was charcoal. I got scales. I was itching all over the body. I tested the hell's flames. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a scripture that Jesus said. We're going to read it. That you'll wait on that day when you want somebody to give you a drop of water and there will be nobody. I'm here to let you know. Stop going to pastors that teach uh, the gospel. That is, uh, it, it has a sweetener. It, it has, a, it's like chocolate. Uh, it's like a, a, a chocolate, a decorated cake. And on the inside, you're eating poison. 
Those are the messages you should be aware of. I want you to get the Bible that has red letters. Begin to read the words of Jesus. And as you read the words of Jesus, you'll know Jesus. You don't have to see a voice. You don't have to see people lay hands on you. You'll be blessed. You'll live long as you read the word of God. I love you. I'm coming back with three. God bless you.